If you ask a random person on the street to describe the quartz crisis, they won't know what it was. Before I became a watch enthusiast, I knew nothing about the quartz crisis. It took me a little while until I found out what it was all about. Since one of the goals of my channel is to help new collectors learn about horology, I'll provide you with a concise overview of the quartz crisis on this episode of Adventures with Time. their journey as a watch enthusiast, they are bound to hear mention of the quartz crisis. I know when I first heard that term, I assumed it was something to do with quartz watches. However, I didn't know what about quartz watches became the crisis. Did they run out of quartz to make the watches? Or was it something else? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Adventures with Time, where I provide you reviews of watches across all price tiers, watch collecting strategies, and general discussions on horology. If that interests you, please subscribe and ring that bell icon so you're alerted whenever I publish a new video. So let me give a short history lesson to explain this period in the evolution of watches. As with all things we humans use in our daily life, advancements in technology drive changes and the evolution of what we use. The combustion engine changed our means of transportation, and now electric motors are changing this industry even further. The internet changed how we obtain information and entertainment. These are disruptive technologies which radically changed our lives. Similar technology advancements have taken place in timekeeping. If you are interested in the history of timekeeping, I'll leave a link to a video I created at the end which chronicles the advancements made in time telling. One of these evolutionary steps took place in the late half of the 20th century as part of the third industrial revolution with the introduction of electromechanics in clocks and watches. This technology held the promise of more accurate and lower cost timekeeping devices. Although watchmakers did experiment with electromechanical watches in the 1950s, these were just prototypes that didn't make it into the market. Hamilton did create a battery-powered watch, the Hamilton 500, in 1957, but it used a traditional mechanical balance and gear train. Those of you of a certain age might remember the Accutron watch by Bulova. This watch used a tuning fork powered by a battery to provide regulation to the watch. It was unveiled in the 1960s with commercials of people placing their watches to their ears to listen to the hum of the tuning fork. I remember in high school, and yeah, I'm dating myself, that a friend of mine had an Accutron and we would always want to listen to the watch. It was thought to be such a disruptive technology that in 1964, an Accurton watch was buried in a time capsule at the New York World's Fair as one of the touchstones of 20th century innovation. Alas, by the 1970s, the Accurton and its tuning fork became obsolete by slivers of quartz. Quartz is a mineral consisting of silicon and oxygen, also known as silicon dioxide. Turns out that quartz vibrates at a specific frequency when an electric current is applied to it. This piezoelectric property was discovered by Jacques and Pierre Curie in 1880. But it wasn't until the 1960s where advancements in integrated circuits allowed for the introduction of consumer-oriented quartz watches. With a battery supplying the electric charge, a microchip circuit detects the oscillations of the crystal and turn them into electric pulses, which in turn drive a miniature electric step motor which turns the gears of the watch. The first commercially available quartz watch was the Astron by Seiko in December of 1969. This started the flood of quartz watches to hit the market. Since quartz watches were less expensive than mechanical watches and much more accurate, they quickly became the technology of choice for the average person in need of an everyday watch. It didn't take long for the market to shift. In 1978, the scale of quartz watches surpassed mechanical watches, with Seiko in Asia and Citizen and Casio in Japan becoming the major producers of quartz watches. That was when the Swiss watch industry started to feel the impact through falling market share. 
Swiss watch companies did not embrace the quartz technology. They focused on higher-end luxury watches. However, it was not sufficient to maintain the Swiss watch industry at the time. Survival as a Swiss watchmaker became extremely tough. Hence, a crisis. The quartz crisis. Some Swiss companies relented and started to make quartz watches. In 1974, Omega released the Marine Chronometer, a cost-certified watch accurate to 12 seconds per year, using a quartz circuit that vibrated 2.4 million times per second. But it was too little too late. The Swiss watch industry was in real trouble. Many of them didn't make it. Between 1970 and 1983, the number of Swiss watchmakers dropped from 1,600 to just 600, with the employment falling commensurate. Whereas Seiko became the world's largest watch company by revenue in 1977. Fortunately, the death of the mechanical watch industry, and therefore the destiny of Swiss watchmakers, was not preordained. Unlike the introduction of automobiles, which eliminated the use of horses as a mode of transportation, quartz watches didn't necessarily mean the total death of the mechanical watch. There was a market for mechanical watches, which promoted craftsmanship, aesthetics, and social status. What was needed was a survival strategy. Enter Ernest Tomke and Nicholas Hayek. In 1983, they led the merger and restructuring of the two largest Swiss watchmaking groups, SSIH and ASUAG, who were on the brink of failure. This new combined group was called SMH. Under this new organizational structure, production costs were reduced and new life was given to the Swiss watch industry. By 1985, Swiss watch production started to rebound. In 1998, this mega organization became the Swatch Group, a powerhouse of Swiss watchmaking. Today, the Swatch Group is the world's largest watch company, owning some of the world's most recognized watch brands. That was the quartz crisis, which was only a crisis for those who focused on mechanical watches. For others, it was an opportunity to apply new technology to an essential component of our daily life. Those who took advantage of it thrust ahead, expanding their business and making boatloads of money. Those who resisted had to restructure and reinvent themselves to stay relevant and viable. Today, we have healthy quartz and mechanical watch brands and watches that combine the best of both. Some like the accuracy and affordability of quartz, while others like the nostalgia and engineering of the traditional mechanical movements. Whichever direction your tastes take you, you have plenty of options from which to choose. Now here is that video I mentioned on the history of watch advancements. And over here is my latest State of the Collection video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.